Hello and welcome to our summer solstice special programme. Every year on the 21st of June, France has an enormous celebration of music. La Fête de la Musique was started by the French in 1982 and transforms the streets of Paris and beyond into a carnival. Also called World Music Day around the globe, it's held on the longest day of the year. And to tell us more about this musical extravaganza is our French Connections editor and music critic, Florence Villemino. This hey. is a massive event, isn't it, in France? It certainly is. It's amazing major event on the cultural calendar and it's celebrated across the country as you say. Now to put it simply, there is music everywhere, Eve, all day long. So from the morning until the sun sets and of course the sun sets really late on the longest day of the year. It's a great way to kick off the summer. So you have all sorts of official concerts that are organized, often in surprising places like at the Elysee Palace where the president lives, for instance, but you also have all these spontaneous concerts by total amateurs. It's the one day of the year where anybody can put on a concert anywhere. It's amazing. And the result is a beautiful and festive cacophony. It's a celebration of the universal language of music. And French people, big and small, love this opportunity to listen to music, to dance to music, and also to showcase their talents. Take a listen. Whether you're black, white, Arab, Asian, it's a melting pot. This is what Paris is. Paris is the Fête de la Musique. I like the small improvised concerts in the streets, not the big official stages. For me, that's the spirit of the Fête de la Musique. Anyone can set up on a street corner and have their moment of glory. Everyone can play in the street no matter the level. That's what's wonderful. I love music, so when I play, I'm happy. I was so scared I'd mess up. I've been playing violin for 10 years, so I wanted to show people what I've learned. Totally amazing. Um, there's certainly something for everyone, and it's really hard actually to decide which event to go to, as there's so many different genres in the sun, isn't there? There totally are. It's one of my favorite cultural events because all you have to do is walk down the street and you'll hear it all jazz, techno, gospel, rap, classical music, sometimes all at the same time. Now, it must be said there are some party poopers out there who love to hate the Fête de la Musique and say it's just a bunch of noise and drunk people on the streets. And it's true, it can get a little <laughs> wild and crazy, and you'll probably end up drinking some hot beer at some point and some weird street food, but it's really part of the cultural experience. And La Fête de la Musique has actually been around for quite a long time, and it's even spread around the world now. That's right, and you were saying that it's been around since 1982, and it's the brainchild of Jacques Lang, who is a famous socialist politician. He was the Minister of Culture at the time, and he has since become kind of an ambassador for the Fête de la Musique, exporting it around the world. Today, it's celebrated in some 2,000 cities in 120 countries across the world. Let's listen to Jacques Lang. This is him talking to France 24, last year. There are so many ideas, so many initiatives. You have to be curious. You have to walk around and discover things. And it's not just in Paris, you know. The most exciting places to be are in small towns and villages. And since you're from France 24, in the rest of the world as well. So the official theme for this year's Fête de la Musique is Europe. What are some of the events that people should look out for? Oh, God, it was so hard to choose, Eve, because, of course, there are thousands of, thousands of con concerts. Now, here in Paris, Emmanuel Macron, the president, is going to host some concerts at the Élysée Palace. Only women artists this year, so you can see there'll be bands like Brigitte, Iris Gold. There will also be concerts at the Prime Minister's office, so this is in Matignon, honoring rap, hip-hop, and R&B, which is kind of random and unusual. Now, I recommend checking out concerts at the saint eustache which is a church in the heart of Paris. And every year for the Fête de la Musique, they stage a marathon of indie rock and pop music, 36 hours of music. And this year, the organ will be in the spotlight. It's one of the biggest organs in Europe. Uh, you can probably see it in some of these images being played by the organ master, Thomas Hospital. It's really cool. I've been there. It's a really fun event. And also, the Irish Cultural Centre in Paris is a great place to hear some good bands. But the best thing to do, Eve, is just wander around and soak up the atmosphere. OK, well, thank you, Flo. The Fête de la Musique is just one day. But in France, there are so many music events taking place throughout the summer. There are hundreds of festivals around the country, including the Paris New York Festival. It's been taking place at the city's delightful Mona Bismarck's American Centre. Olivia Salazar-Winspear reports. 
A sophisticated setting, cocktails and music, the Mona Bismarck American Center is a summer hotspot for these Parisians. Even though it's quite posh, quite opulent looking, it's still convivial, quite accessible. With this lovely green park around you, it's really pleasant. You feel like you're in a country garden. Just meters from the hustle and bustle of Parisian life, tonight's program features talent imported direct from the US. Hip-hop, of course. Aku Anaru is an artist that I'm really into at the moment. I'm really excited to see her. She does hip-hop mixed with spoken word, poetry with African influences, jazz, soul. Is there anybody here who came here tonight to stand still? Just a few beats in and Aquanaru has got the crowd up on their feet. It was a great energy, like um, you could feel that the people really appreciated the music. Um, very nice environment, it was, it was, it was lovely. Weaving in different instrumental traditions, the singer draws from her West African roots in many of her songs. I mean, hip-hop, jazz, soul, reggae, it all comes from Africa. Even the relation, the, the centrality of the, jump, the drum and the way in which rap is used as a percussive instrument, you know, in a hip-hop context is a very African sort of approach to music. And when it comes to the subject matter, she says hip-hop and rap provide the perfect platform to take on social and political issues or even more personal stories. Had a sound. I think this is a really interesting moment right now, hip-hop being mixed with country music. I saw a video today where someone mixed hip-hop with opera. It's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. Hip-hop is going any and everywhere, and that's, that's a great thing. Her particular brand of hip-hop has certainly hit the spot with this audience, who give rapper Rashan Ahmad a very warm welcome before rocking the dance floor late into the night. That's such a delightful venue here in Paris, the Mona Bismarck American Centre. Now, Flo, when I say Versailles, what do you think of? I think of someone getting their head chopped off, to be honest. <laughs> Well, not many of the tourists that swamp its avenues every day know, but the place it has a rich history of electronic music. And not only does Versailles play host to electro dance parties on a regular basis, but many of the leading lights of the French house scene, like Air and Phoenix, come from there. Owen Barnell reports. On a weekend in Versailles, night falls. The peaceful avenues of this famous chateau then transform into a gigantic dance floor. 12,000 electronic music fans replace the daylight tourists. It might seem strange, but actually, it's not out of keeping with the surroundings. Versailles played a leading role in the emergence of French house. Artists like Air, Breakbot, and Phoenix all hail from here. Yet how could this city, so famed for its bourgeois sensibility, lay claim to this musical heritage? For Pedro Winter, the former manager of Daft Punk, it's first of all a question of timing. Just like in Paris with Daft Punk, I think that in Versailles it was just a group of mates that met around their instruments, software and drum machines, and ultimately that meant it was possible to make music at home. The spread of the drum machine made it easier for home musicians across the country, but it might have been even easier to acquire one in Versailles. A new film about the discovery of these instruments at the time is out this week in cinemas. Its director was also founder of the group Nouvelle Vague, a pillar of the Versailles music scene where everyone met. There was undoubtedly a connection, though obviously we weren't aware of it at the time. Everyone knew each other, everyone listened to what everyone made, and there you go. It pushed us to take things further. In doing so, the scene conquered the world. And it's this success that Versailles is now relying on to rejuvenate its image. In this luxurious building just next to the chateau, a 200 square meter apartment is home to this artist in his studio. 
lent to him by the city free of charge to cultivate the Versailles scene of the now. Philippe Coulier has everything he needs here to work on his music. It's had a massive impact on me, allowing me to think, to tell myself that in fact I can go to Versailles and make music too. The music he makes, stylish electro. A genre that comes with a Versailles seal of approval. Just before we go, another music event this summer is the Peacock Society that's taking place in Paris's largest woods, the Parc Floral. It's another chance to celebrate the best of electronic and techno music. And we're going to leave you with a teaser for the festival taking place on the 5th and the 6th of July. Thank you very much for joining us, Flo. It's been a pleasure to have you. Remember our website, we're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. Selecta. France 24, every art form 